Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel you need to not only survive the apocalypse but keep up to date on all things automotive, machines in motion. And today we are interviewing a man with a very unique machine who is named... Joe Chapman. Joe Chapman. Now, I've seen a lot of things since I've been doing Cruising the Coast, but i got to tell you, this is really unique. What in the world is it? It is a 1944 white Co cab over engine semi truck hot rod car hauler and i'll tell you what for years i would want to look up stuff about these things and i didn't know what a coe was and there's nowhere on the internet to find out what a coe is i finally just walked up to a man that owned one and said what is a coe cab over engine and honestly when i asked you what this was I already knew you know why because it says white on the front other than that i would have not a clue about what this thing was because even if it was in its original state, it's a, such an odd looking thing that I would not know what it is. Now, this thing has got a sleeper on the back, and I do know I've seen them without sleepers. So what's the story? Is that something that you manufactured? Or? Some of them were sleeper cabs, other day cab, and I'm not a truck uh, expert. So basically, that's uh, what it was, either a day cab or a sleeper. This okay. is a sleeper. And so, but no one could ever actually sleep in that, right? Have, uh, I sleep in it, yes. Oh, really? <laughs> Man, oh well. <laughs> yeah, that, well. Makes you wonder, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as I'm looking at it, there's just so many things about it that are, that are just mind-blowing that I'd re really like for you to just kind of walk us through and tell us some of the features of this vehicle. Yes, sir. 1944 white 3000 cab over semi-truck. Uh, was a uh, carnival truck out of California. Uh, Crystal Ride Incorporated uh, run a carnival evidently in the 50s and 60s. Uh, in 1960, the story I was told, this truck broke down in Dothan, Alabama, and they sold it to the junkyard there, and it sat there 50 years. Me and the old man, Ed Foster, went to look at it to purchase it and uh, Ed tells me don't dare buy that piece of junk. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway. it was still in Dothan whenever you came across it? <laughs> yes sir. And uh, uh, where are you from? Mobile. So Mobile is not that far from Dothan. Yeah we found it on the Dothan Craigslist. Uh, so anyway uh, we made a deal, took all day, I took a trailer with me but uh, the trailer wasn't big enough for the truck so we had to cut the cab off in the woods took all day and finally got it on the trailer and uh, headed toward Mobile uh, that evening. Uh, very cool truck. Uh, their unique uh, body lines are uh, awesome. So anyway, uh, we got it home. Uh, had a fire truck chassis. There was a 52 C grade. It's flipped upside down, underslung is a term to describe it. Uh, yeah, not being real hip to how these things were put together, I had noticed that the rear springs didn't look like they were facing the right direction. So the frame is upside down. Front and rear springs are on top. Axles are on top. Gives it the low stance. Oh, yeah. uh, so anyway, uh, the engine and transmission and many other steering and brake parts come off of a Harrison County school bus uh, that was bought out of Diamond Head, Mississippi. Uh, so anyway, was the donor engine and transmission and the steering uh, column and the brake assembly. And so all. this thing is diesel or gas? It's a 5.9 Cummins diesel Yeah. with a Allison 4-speed. You know, the older I get, the harder it is to bend over. So I didn't look under there to see what it was, but I was at the mall, Edgewater Mall, two days ago, and I, I was walking past as a man was saying, I don't know what it is, I ain't got no spark plugs. How about well? <laughs> <laughs> that tells you it's a diesel. Yeah, right? so, but you, you're not only are you driving a really unusual vehicle, but the vehicle that you have uh, loaded up onto it's a bit unusual. What can you tell me about that? It is a, a 1928 or 9 coupe, Model A. Uh, manufactured by Ford. Manu Motor uh, manufactured by uh, Henry Ford, I guess. Anyway, it's. Uh, a mid 50s Hemi 270, which is a baby. Uh, which is manufactured not by Ford. Right, it's a Chrysler or Dodge product. Uh, anyway, uh, the frame 
is a fire truck also bought from a friend of mine, Steve uh, McDuffie. But anyway, it's flipped over also. Uh, it's supposed to resemble a 50s land speed car is what I want it to look like. Uh, it's got Halibrand axles front and rear, four-wheel disc brakes, uh, cool setup. Well, over the years I've seen some land speed cars with that steering box deal hanging out the side. Is Cal that steering. Cal steering. So that's an aftermarket product that uh, has become popular enough that more than one person is using it. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and your, you know, the wheels you're talking about, those three-piece things that are on there. What are those called? Those are knockoffs. Uh, they're knockoff hooks. Uh, they so in, a, in other words, you really could knock all that it off. It takes a it, hammer to loosen them. And or the tire tight. would fall off of it. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, yeah, sir. I kind of thought that's why they fall. I've been seeing them over the years. I'll tell you something else that I've been seeing over the years. Because uh, I've been doing hot rods for since I was 18. And I'm guessing you were too, yes, since sir. you're at such an advanced stage of the, 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 <laughs> the fabrication process. Um, when I was a kid, you never saw a COE show up anywhere. You know, if it wasn't a two-door something, nobody wanted it. You could buy exactly. a four-door 57 Chevy for $30 back then. Yeah. And you will not do that today. <laughs> no, you won't. And, and another thing is the COEs, which probably you could buy for scrap 30 years ago, Right. Are, are like priceless now. Big money. Big money. They're proud of now. Well, another thing I, I think has changed a lot over the years is when I was a kid, I remember one time wanting to paint my car yellow and I went down to price it and I was shocked. And the man said, well, yellow is always the most expensive color. But over the years, I've noticed a change and that now rust and patina are the most expensive colors you can get and yellow just in there with the rest. There you go. There you go. That's cool. Uh, no paint on this. Uh, it took uh, something 50 years. Uh, we drug it out of the wood and we're just going to, out of the woods, we're just going to leave it uh, as is. Uh, we're going to fix the, the majority of the rust. I ain't worried about being perfect by no means. But there are ways around that. Yes. Because I have seen people take some really nice shiny metal, weld it in, and when it's done, it looks just like the rest of the exactly. rust. Exactly. We want it to look old. Right. Wanted to look old. Right. This thing here would would look good in any landscape just sitting there. Exactly. Right. And so anyways, you come here with a couple of your buddies and you said they helped you out with the car. Could you introduce them to us? Steve McDuffie and Ed Foster. Steve McDuffie and Ed Foster. And uh, with this build, uh, we started uh, the week after last cruise in the coast. Uh, put this together. It took six months, basically. Been driving it around for about six months. Well, Steve, isn't that the man that just won the big uh, dollar money he's, from the crew? Uh, he's coast? been a lucky man here in the last couple weeks. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. He's a uh, champion uh, donut or tire burning uh, at the uh, Gulfport Dragway uh, two weeks ago. So he followed you here in his own hot rod. Was the plan that if yours broke down, you would tow, him, tow it in with his? He's very helpful. Yes, he would definitely help. And uh, could you uh, describe uh, some of the features of your car since it's sitting right behind us and everybody's going to want to know about it? It's just a 41 Ford rat rod. A little bit different. We've got a 59 Rambler rear quarters on it for the bed. Didn't want what everybody else had a truck bed. So. Well, you know, back in the day when somebody showed up in a car like that, it was generally because they were on their way to the paint job. Are you taking this to get it painted? Everybody keeps telling me it's going to be nice when it gets finished. It's, it's been finished for about four or five years now. It, it gets drove a lot and it gets drove hard. You know what's really sad is there are people that put a whole lot of effort into painting their cars, but they know in advance when they get here that if they park next to you, no one's going to be looking at their car, but they'll be looking at yours. So that's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, it is. It's just real good. It's you go to a car show and people are backing up into seventy and eighty thousand dollars more vans and taking a piece of my piece of junk. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Something, something different than everybody yeah. else has got. Well man, I gotta tell you, I am so happy y'all brought this here because it gave me something to do today. And uh, I hope that y'all will make it back every year, if not with this, with whatever your next creation is. And i got to ask you, do you have any other creations many, that are in the uh, works? Many projects in the makings. Uh, I have a problem finishing any of them. No, uh, 
I suspect uh, that one's on the truck. It won't run. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> I suspect your your yard looks very similar to mine, and that the people at this show love you a whole lot more than your neighbors. Uh, they call it the junkyard, but uh, it's good job. <laughs> yard. Yeah. We certainly are happy to have met y'all. Thank you so much for letting me interview you, and we will see y'all next year. Thank you, buddy.